let's hear from Kenny Japon at uh, that uh, press conference on Thursday after Alexander Fenimakin spoke. He also had a few words to share. Let's listen. To get understanding from the speaker. So we are at the caucus meeting, and maybe I will admit that it took so long. But that is even allowed in parliamentary culture. I engaged Honorable Abuja <clears throat> and told the minister, oh, then you made a mistake. You should have informed the speaker that you were at the caucus meeting. The speaker didn't know, which I cannot defend because I'm not part of the leadership. And I'm sure he, he's right. I'm sure if my leaders have informed the speaker that we're holding a meeting and we'll be back, definitely he would have waited. So, you know, Ken, it was the onus was also on the so-called majority leaders to inform the speaker, where are your colleagues? And he will tell them they are in caucus. They want to tell her that nobody knew that we we're having a caucus meeting. Well, he can be a Pimenides and sit on the fence because even if he knows, and once there's no official communication, I can pretend I didn't know. That one day, I can pretend that I didn't know. Yeah, that's the, that's the problem. I've, I've posed that question because I entered the chamber and I saw, I saw NDC occupying MPP seats. So I just had to leave. I told the leader and the leadership, the two whips and deputy majority leader that we should go back. It's in the interest of our country, Ghana, I believe in Ghana. With what is going on in parliament, it's not good for the country. I have advised my colleagues from the good, the other side that look, assuming you win the incoming election, would you get to test of parliament to take decisions? And they all said no. So I said, well, if you are saying that Professor Michael Quinn set a precedence and you are using that to take a position as you have done. Then what happens if you win election and you don't get to this? Do you expect MPP also to help for us to rule this country? That is my fear for Ghana. Whatever is going on, if we don't put an end to it, and we politicize issues. Ghana, I'm telling you, in 2025, you will see worse things in parliament. Because whoever wins and whoever loses will not cooperate. Then what will be the fate of our country? It is the solution to this matter that um, uh, is, is the burden of Austin Game. And in fact, this is the reason why he's here this morning. So Game, I'm going to bring you in here at this point in a bit, but let me also welcome um, lawyer Amwakwa. He is a member of the NPP Legal Directorate, uh, lawyer Kinsley Amwakwa Bedu, and then also a, say, a lecturer, a law lecturer, joining us on the phone, as I indicated earlier. Um, and the Apia Kobe has a, a little issue to, to deal with. And so he was scheduled to be here. But this morning, in fact, we've just gotten notice just about an hour ago about the situation that he's had to deal with. So lawyer Kinsley Amwakwa Bedu is joining us uh, on, on the telephone. Lawyer Kinsley Amwakwa Bedu, good morning. Good morning, Alfred, and good morning to your listeners and viewers. Thank you very much for joining us here on Key Point. Now, um, Mr. Gami, with what is at play now, it's quite clear there are entrenched positions at play. And there is really no <coughs> end in sight as far as the politics of this situation is concerned. Does the solution to this matter lie in the courts? Or, as the Speaker said, Parliament has the capacity and the capability to be able to solve this problem. Thank you, Alfred, and uh, good morning to everybody listening to us and my dear friends and uh, uh, Mr. Mokwa also online. 
Uh, indeed, to be very honest with uh, all of us, this is a very burdensome matter that uh, we need to take seriously. I say so because we have uh, a strangulated economy on our hands already, and going into an election without knowing the direction we want to take. And so coming to add this problem to it is quite, uh, uh, it should be of concern to everybody. Now, Parliament certainly is not and should never be seen as an extension of an executive governance or judiciary. Parliament must remain independent and members so elected should see themselves, though they came on the vehicle of political parties, oftentimes they will have to represent the interests of the state. And that is very, very instructive and should be taken seriously on board. And that is the reason why any form of decision by the judiciary will have to be completely in consonance and in sync with the Constitution of Ghana and not placing anybody. And I think they've, let me assume positively that that is what they've been doing all this while and should continue to do because some aspects of the Constitution are to be applied mm -hmm. and not to be interpreted per se unless it becomes really, really very critical. Otherwise, just like the laws, they are expected to be applied. Right. You know, otherwise the Supreme Court will be inundated mm -hmm. and they can never do any other work. Okay. And, and, and so it's very important as a foundation for this conversation. Mm. Now, the problem, let me call it problem for, for now, uh, that is visited on Parliament now, is, is the reason why I wrote personally uh, and, and for the information of the public, I wrote to the speaker and copied the same letter to the two leaders. Let, for me not be, to become part of the, 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 <laughs> the mm. controversy, to the two leaders. You, you, you wrote to them? Yes. I, I delivered the letter myself and when in doubt, with one of them, he asked me to forward it back to him. I did same. We, we spoke on the phone, exchanged a lot of pleasantries. And so is, is, is that I have taken notice that Parliament is being gradually pushed to become like an extension of the judiciary so that every little thing the judiciary will become part and parcel of, you know, the house. Mm. And, and it's, so, it's so dangerous for the nation that we should, we should allow such a thing to happen. And that is the reason why I wrote to them and told them that, look, what you are doing to yourselves, if you don't find ways and means of resolving this matter that can be resolved, you will gradually... Now allow yourselves to be controlled by other arms of government and you will live to regret it. So I know at least some of them have reached out to me mm -hmm. and uh, I'm a mediator. I'm not, I'm not talking about it for talking sake. I, both within Ghana and outside Ghana, I'm invited to do and I do. And, and so therefore, because mediators have a habit of not talking in public about matters they have been able to resolve and those they are dealing with. Mm -hmm. So I am unable to, to say, say so that much. and I will not say it for the sake of my clients whom I have assisted in any way uh, possible. But this is uh, to me, and let me say it uh, with clarity, that this to me is a small matter. It's a small matter. It's a small matter. This issue? Yes. It can be resolved even by the people themselves that are embroiled, you know, embroiled in this matter. They can resolve it themselves if they were minded to resolve it. I see. Now, knowing that they appear not to 
have the interest in going into it to resolve it themselves. That's why I made the offer. And some of them are beginning to pick it up. And it's a very, let me repeat again, it's a very simple matter. I've had many, many people contributed already on radio and television. Some even took steps to go and visit the speaker, like the, um, uh, you know, the apex body that advises the, the president, mm -hmm. uh, uh, council of state. I understood they visited the speaker. But I know as a mediator, to be very honest with you, it's not everybody who can, can help resolve matters of this nature. You know, it's not everybody, especially those who have deep-seated partisan political interests. So you will not recommend the president? Of yes, course, the will. president cannot and may not. That's why he's not even taking any step to do it. Well, you know, even the Council of State, it means they must make very careful choice or choices of people who will go there, mm -hmm. who will be completely impartial people, because impartiality is very critical in this matter. I am... By God's grace, I can. I, I, am, I have been on the ticket of NDC before, and I empathize with them. But when it comes to mediation, the mediator is not the one to resolve the matter. The mediator will only facilitate the process and get the parties to resolve the matter themselves. And therefore, that, that is what I will represent. And I can tell you on authority, by what I know and what I have been doing, mm -hmm. that if I have a pre-meeting with the MPP side, I have a pre-meeting with the NDC side, I have a pre-meeting with the Speaker of Parliament, and brought the three parties together within some hours, we should be able to resolve this matter. Because already they are, they are supposed to be or they are all gentlemen, you know, uh, and, and therefore they know what is right and what is wrong, will be only guiding them to have a conversation. Because if you go debating, you have a loser, you have a winner. You have argument, you have a winner, you have a loser. I know as a mediator how to lead them through the conversation to resolve the matter without burdening anybody and without anybody feeling guilty. Now, Supreme Court will, pro will give a definitive kind of ruling. And when they give a ruling, it becomes a precedent, is imposed of new, you are to go and comply. But you know the outcome? When Supreme Court even says that the MPP side has won, mm -hmm. and the side has lost, that is when you will have a problem. That is when the crisis will begin, because NDC will have to comply, Speaker will have to comply, because that is a ruling of the court. But they will not collaborate. They will not cooperate, because we have a hung parliament, as we all know. They don't have the numbers, especially now that we are, we are in, the, in the midst of... Uh, of election and mm -hmm. everybody is uh, hanging around his constituency, you will not always have the numbers in parliament. And NDC people, if they marshal their numbers, even 100, and they are available in parliament, mm -hmm. they will always throw, throw, throw out whatever is brought by the, by the executive. And is that what we want as a nation? Certainly not. And therefore, we need everybody to collaborate. Right. And so I mm -hmm. think that the way forward is clear. If they want a resolution of the matter, the burden is on the two sides, that they are willing to have this matter resolved. We would facilitate the process of how, it's just a simple five-stage process. We'll prepare them through the pre-meeting. We'll let them uncover what they really want to resolve. They will learn about the importance of the matter right. that is before them. And they will search for a solution that we will guide them to have. And, and by the time you realize, they will explain themselves into writing how they want it resolved. I see. So, so for you, arbitration will produce a winner or, and a loser. Supreme Court ruling 
may produce a, a winner and a loser. So in this case, it's, it's a mediation approach that will produce the best solution to this. In fact, the most civilized way of resolving matters is to negotiate or resolve it through mediation. Supreme Court is essentially an arbitrative body because their ruling is binding on everybody. Arbitration ruling is binding on everybody. So essentially, that is what it is. In fact, the court is an extension of ADR, if people don't know. Because at the end of the day, everything must have an end. Every mm. litigation must have an end. Right. And so if, if there is a matter that is of <coughs> concern to people and they can't resolve it through negotiation right. or mediation, they either have to go to arbitration, especially if it's a criminal matter. If you go to the U.S. today, almost 60 to 80 percent of all their civil cases go through mediation. Let me do this quickly. And so essentially the, the, the solution to this matter on the verdict of uh, Mr. Game lies outside of the court, really. So whatever the Supreme Court would say, it will still be incumbent on the parties in this particular situation committing to wanting to solve this problem. What's your take on this? Well, uh, thank you very much. And uh, um, Mr. Game has touched on a lot of the things I wanted to touch on. It being that um, Parliament, the second arm of government, is a, is, is a representative of its representative of the whole of Ghana. And the situation being played out here, there is a politics of it, then there's a constitutional aspect of it, which the proper uh, jurisdiction of the court has been involved. And as he said, they, 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 the court cannot just come into issues unless their jurisdiction has been invoked. And their jurisdiction has been invoked, and so they need to be seen to be doing their work, and that is what they are doing. Now, the politics of it is making um, people make comments on who is more powerful and who is not. I think we've gone beyond that. And as Mr. Gamma said, when the Supreme Court brings a decision, it must be complied with. Now, it looks like the posture of the parties, and uh, unfortunately, the press conference of the Speaker is also one of them. It looks like the posture of the parties is so intransigent because of the political nature of it. But before um, the politics of it, we need to look at the national interest. What is the national interest? We have nurses, we have, we have public servants who need to be paid in the first quarter of next year. We have a president who has to come and give his final state of the nation address before he hands over. We have several things that must happen. And so parliament must be working before they break up to go and do their campaign, which they are still doing, which they are doing now. And so when we take the, for the optics of it and for the narrative that can be generated out of it, when we take an intransigent position, it doesn't help at all. And so together with our, our father, the Speaker of Ghana, and the Speaker of Parliament, and all the parties, let us, for the sake of the national interest, remove our particular political angles to this. Because at the end of the day, it looks like, and how the narrative was going and so, as uh, Mr. Gamish spoke, it looks like, oh, even the powerful people will not even be the Supreme Court for that. That would not work well for those who are watching. For the, for the in quotes, uh, the more growers and the non entities in quotes. If this person can do it, then I can also do it. But that's not what we want to achieve. We want to achieve, if this is the only parliament which I foresee, which is going to be so easily distributed, we want to show, show that even in situations like that, we were able to make progress. And so I would, I would, I intentionally, not speaking as a politician, but speaking as a citizen of Ghana, and trying to even speak as a statesman, which I'm not there yet, to say that, let everyone lay down their intransigent position so that we can bring clarity to this. What is it? Someone wants to be a majority. Someone wants to be a minority. The father, even in the sickness, in the thick of this, a bill has to have been tabled for the abolition of it of, 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 of the e levy. I think it doesn't all well. Let us resolve what needs to be resolved first. 
we go back to Parliament, things are as they were, we progress. You see, the fact is that the Supreme Court may come and even give a ruling that will prevent it. All right? It may give a ruling that will because, you see, the position of the Deputy Speaker is different from those who are not, uh, who are just uh, trying to be independent. Or so you see, the legalities of it is also not, not straight jacketed. But for now, so that Parliament can work, let the status quo ante remain. Let people who can speak to both parties speak behind the scenes, not on, on platforms like this, not on other uh, public uh, 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 platforms that only infuriate or enforce in transgender positions. We have to really bring everything down. So that at the end of the day, the Supreme Court circumstance and its, its power is maintained. That all of any respect okay. that these are accorded to it is maintained. Then that of Parliament is also maintained. If it, it shouldn't be that what happened in, on the 6th of January 2021, that when it is the dawn of 7, is repeated. It should never, ever happen again. So then they also have their image, their socrates, their respect also to be, to, to be, to be protected, all right? So that that of the executive, and it's good that the president hasn't come in, as Mr. Garner said, because clearly that will create another issue as if he's trying to influence matters. So we should stand and look for now and wait. The bottom line, like we have all agreed, is that parliament itself has a means of resolving this matter. It is not in the open. So if we see a member of the Council of State trying to attempt, Mr. Garner is trying to attempt, let us allow the process to go. The any commentary that we will make, that will make one party in president and this is that, and therefore we do this, that's no organ well at all, at all. So that we are able to achieve this. Parliament will stay in its respect to be intact. Judiciary, its respect will be intact. The executive will be able to do their work. Then we, 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 the parliament will come to an end, and then we'll go on. The next time, if you vote, we are not assuming, we are not anticipating that this kind of equal numbers will, 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 will be what will happen in Parliament. If it happens that in the future we get that, Supreme Court has given an interpretation. If it happens that indeed a president comes who uh, Parliament is rather, the majority is rather on the other side, we will know how to do business. But even if it's a power and we're having these difficulties, then we will have problems. And so today, as I said, I'm not speaking as a producer, I'm speaking as a Ghanaian who wants the better of Ghana, who's speaking at, at, at Ghana. Let us allow processes that will make the parliament function again. Okay. Let us not take transgender positions. Let us not make any commentary that brings someone, uh, I am more powerful of this, and I am more powerful than this, and when I started, this was this. And no, 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 no. Let's, uh -huh. let's not do it. It doesn't achieve anything. It doesn't help anything. The position of the judiciary is sacrosanct, is powerful. They have their jurisdiction. They cannot exceed that. That of parliament, all of us voted for us, for them. They should go and do what we sent them there to do. Okay. Anything that will make them too, too powerful more than that, it is not encouraged now. Okay. Um, then the likes of Mr. Gambe and the members of the um, uh, council of state, any other person who can speak, um, so anyone who's speaking should be seen to be pouring water on, on this seeming fire. It is anything that okay. someone said must be dousing this so that we have our, our, our parliament working uh, and we have our respect. Uh, uh, like that's what I would say. Right, lawyer Kinsa Makabuedo, thank thank you for that input and also c coming through on, on this. He's a member of the N NPP Legal Directorate. He's a private legal practitioner as well as uh, he's a lawyer. And Mr. Gami, and, and I'll come to you, Ms. Adams. But Mr. Gami, what would constitute a win-win situation in the, in in this matter? And before you answer that, let me acknowledge the presence of the Honourable Samuel Atachia, who is the member of Parliament for the Boko South Constituency. Um, on the ticket of the MPP, also a private legal practitioner as well. And uh, Samal Atachia, good morning to you. Thank you for joining us on Key Point. Good morning. Great. Now, Mr. Gamay, what will constitute this win win situation? The <clears throat> Honorable Atachia is a good friend and uh, 
has been a, a, my lawyer before in a case. Uh, so I appreciate uh, you so much. Right. Now, let me say this. You see, everything must have an end somewhere mm. along the line. And uh, like I said, I and my organization uh, will be available. And I assure you that we have the capacity and I have offered in my letter that our office premises will be available. We are not even going to use Parliament. We are not going to charge them even <coughs> one farthing. We would make available our, our, our uh, canteen, we will make available everything that they will have to uh, eat. Those who will be authorized with decision-making powers to be present at this mediation meeting. And I guarantee you, when I finish with the MPP side in a pre-meeting, and I finish on the NDC side at a pre-meeting, and my engagement with the speaker, the two sides coming together, maximum, maximum, maximum three hours, this matter is over. I see. Ms. Adams, so yeah. what, what is with this position that has been espoused by Kinsia Marco Abuedo that is a point of departure from the position that the NDC takes on this matter and how this can be resolved, really, well, for the greater good? Clearly, you can see the NDC have, for the life of this F parliament, has always been available to transact business for and on behalf of the state. We have disagreed in times where we'll have to disagree on a position based on what we think will impact negatively on the people we serve. That is why, despite we challenging the outcome of the presidential elections, we approved ministers and even suffered some consequences from the base. Despite challenging the outcome of the elections, the budget for 2021 was presented by not the Minister for Finance. We took it through and approved it. The only time we rejected the budget was when they introduced draconian tax policies like e-levy that we knew was going to even be more damaging than the benefits they sought to get from it. Today, Bank of Ghana is reporting spending more money printing new notes because people have now left the cashless society to now dealing with cash. So your notes get destroyed quickly and they have to be what? Replaced. And you spend money to print money. Money you are spending to print money is now more than what e -Levy is bringing to you. So the NDC side have always been ready to do business. Why do you think that we'll always have more numbers than the MPP side, even on the seventh? But clearly, their leader chose on every occasion to rather blackmail and do bad politics, to deceive the people. How on earth can the leader of the MPP minority group suggest that we are doing what we are doing because well, we don't want free SHS bill. Who says, considering the processes a bill goes through, the first reading has not even been done of the bill. When the first reading is done, it will now be referred to the committee. The committee will now go and look at it. They will now come out with a report. We will now debate the principles behind it look at it, then it goes through the second consideration and the, the, the third and all that. Do you think that you have time to be able to deal with free SHS bill in these just few days that we are left with? It's just not possible. Government, you see, because the NDC put out there that we are coming to make free SHS better and we will make a law to back it and give it permanent funding as we did for National Youth Employment Program. You remember that was just a program, a policy that was out there without legal backing. It was the NDC that came and developed the law to back it and now turn it to Youth Employment what? Authority with proper funding. It's the same way we are going to do with free SHS. Give it the legal backing, give it appropriate funding. But so the legal actually, backing that they are, they, they are and I'm saying to that have this bill. You don't bring, you don't bring a bill wow. now when you know that it cannot be passed. How do you look, say it cannot look be passed? At, looking at the time we are left with, we are left with just 
actually bet for all these situations which have even been on recess for, for the elections and ah. only come back after elections. And we, there's no on. way we will be able to deal with this and complete it, to take it through all the stages. Two, he talks about tax exemptions and that when we do tax exemption, it will generate employment and because we don't want employment. Chief, so for eight years, you have not created the employment. You are waiting for these uh, 29 days to an elections for tax exemption before you go and create the employment. That will show that you have done well. So clearly, they should talk to their leader to behave himself and stop speaking the way he's speaking and condescending to his colleagues. Mm -hmm. That is not the way to do. That's not the way to lead a group. He is not leading right. And he's my very good friend, but I'm, I'm happy with the words that he used on his colleagues. It's inappropriate. So what uh, 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 Dr. Game is saying, what uh, lawyer Amokwa Bwedu uh, is talking about, how can it work when you have a leader behaving the way he is behaving? When you fail to, to preside over a committee, to present business for the House, leading to Mr. Speaker not having any business and therefore have to adjourn, then now you say that oh, the petition is business enough. Is that how we do? How can petition now become business so recognized for the House? That petition was only requesting Mr. Speaker to recall, and it ends there. Whatever was the basis for request for the recall, once Mr. Speaker has done it, that must translate into a business that will be presented to the House for the House to transact. You failed to perform that duty. You failed. And so, clearly, they should, be talking to, they should be talking to their person. They should be talking to their leader if they truly want us to deal, to deal with all these situations. But I can tell you that most of the things that they are talking about, for free SHS thing that he's doing, it will not mm -hmm. wash. Ghanaians know that they have messed it up. And advertising that save free SHS, vote Baumia in this state, we, like I've given you an example, President Kufo introduced National employment, pro national youth employment program. No okay. legal backing, nothing. They were just picking here and picking there. And at the time we came, payment even was a problem. We in NDC gave it the legal backing and created permanent sources of funding. That today we have youth employment authority that has funding that they pay people who are employed in that in that sector. That is what we will do for the free SHS and further enhance it to the tertiary level that we say that we've seen a barrier where after the free SHS, entry to tertiary becomes a challenge because of the fee that is demanded of you in your first year. We say there will be no such stress again. You enter that also smoothly. And once you are in there, the, 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 the loan plus system will take care of other things from your second year. And when you leave university also, because of 24-hour economy, the policy of what? 133. You will also get a job to do. And once you get the job, you will be paying for the loan that is given you. So we have a clear policy guideline to deal with unemployment, educational challenges from secondary through tertiary. That is the NDC for you. And they should stop so this Katie politics Amon, that they Katie are Amon doing. Amon is saying that it's going to, in fact, their, their next move is to cite the speaker for contempt. He well, said this to journalists. I want, hold on a bit. I want us to hear from Katie Amon on okay. that <laughs> particular issue of the next step that the NPP will take to cite the speaker for contempt because of what happened on Thursday. Take a look. The parliament is, is a master of its own regulations and its own it's nonsense. That's not the case. The Supreme Court is spoken. The Speaker is supposed to get the House in order to let us do the, what we are supposed to be doing. Why we are here? Why does he consistently keep like that? He's not acting on the Constitution. What, what, he, what, what does he? What, you see, listen, listen. Be careful. Listen to what you are saying. If, I, I don't expect the Speaker to be saying things like that. He's a seasoned lawyer. He can't be saying that. He doesn't act on the basis of the Constitution, but on the basis of the standing orders. What are the standing orders? My, oh, the oh, master oh, of the. the but that's an entirely different matter. That's an entirely different matter. Supreme Court is simply asked that you should give an order to restore oh, what the situation. Was. Recall, you are not, are not listening. We recall Parliament. The Speaker, when he sat, was supposed to do a first thing. And the first thing was supposed to be this. The decision, the ruling that I made 
on the particular day has been overset, has been stayed by the Supreme Court, which interprets the constitution, which interprets what we do over here. Accordingly, the status quo anti should be reverted to. So, we have a convention. We have a convention. It's not a argument. No sense. You guys are not listening. Supreme Court is spoken. It is all for us, members of parliament on the majority side, to be arguing at any point. This is a matter. This is foreclosed. It is completely foreclosed. Supreme Court is spoken. That is the end of the matter. Why, why were you not? Why were you not at the business? That is not again, 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 if he said that, listen, listen, the listen. The others, the others, the others of the Supreme Court were directed specifically to the speaker. It was the speaker. It wasn't the leadership, it wasn't the clerk, it wasn't the leadership which made that uh, ruling or that decision. It was the Speaker of Parliament who unconstitutionally made a proclamation, whatever is it that he said the last time. The uh, Supreme Court is told him that he was wrong. Restore matters to what they were so before you did that. Line of action for the MPP. Well, we will cite him for contempt. We will cite the Speaker for contempt. Watch the space. I mean, but, but that's the uh, uh, Sukwa member of parliament. This is the Minister for Trade and Industry, Kamnatari Hammond, there. He's also a lawyer. Uh,